guys, welcome back to our channel. I say our channel because usually Mariah is here with me, my sister, but because of social distancing, we couldn't get together this week. We are going to be doing our What If Wednesday this week, and that is from the book What If God Wrote Your Bucket List by Jay Paleitner. And how we normally do this is we will read a chapter out of this book and kind of talk about what it says. The purpose of this book is to kind of make you think about what your life would be like if God wrote your bucket list for you, if he chose what was important for you to accomplish within your life. So, number 24 is Uncover Secrets of Generations Past. So I'm gonna read it and then we'll talk about it a little bit. It says, Under Uncover Secrets of Generations Past. The year I was born, my mom's parents moved from Beloit, Wisconsin to Albuquerque, New Mexico for a secret government job. The year was 1957. The nuclear arms race was coming of age. No one in the family, not even grandma, knew what Orlando Mule did. 15 years earlier, the super secret lab at nearby Los Alamos had been ground zero for research for the Manhattan Project, the allied effort to produce the atomic weapons that effectively ended World War II. Family lore suggests that Grandpa Manuel worked at Sandia National Laboratories a branch of Los Alamos. Setting aside for a moment any controversy about nuclear power government secrets, it is cool to consider the secret lives of the recent ancestors. Not our parents, we know too much about them, but take a moment to consider that, <laughs> that just sunk in, but take a moment to consider the exploits and adventures of your grandparents, great aunts and uncles, or even great grandparents. Most of us have some memories of those generations, albeit clouded by images of their gray hair, slow moving joints, and recently discovered personas as retirees. Plus, any time you were with grandparents, they were, by definition, grandparents. Hard charging CEOs, gruff steel workers, disciplined operating room nurses, and gritty journalists all turn into mush when they hold their grandbabies. In other words, most people wouldn't even recognize their grandparents at the peak of their productive years. Find a black and white photo of your granny and granddad on the job, and you won't recognize the look in their eyes. All of which opens our imagination to who they were and what they accomplished. Let's play a game for a moment. Consider what you know for sure about your grandparents and throw out any negative baggage. Spin a yarn that paints Mima and Papa in the absolute best light. Were they the first of their family to graduate, own a home, or launch a business? Did they move across the globe or country to start a new life? Were they more engineer or artist? What role did God play in their lives? Were they motivated by fame, fortune, or family? Did they own any patents, play any, play any instruments, run for coffee, or serve as church elders? Were they Bobby Soxers? I don't know what that is. In the 1940s, beat Nicks in the 50s or hippies in the 60s? What did they read? Watch, write, play, sing, build, buy, and sell. What kind of thing were on their bucket list? If Graham or Gramps is around, ask them. You might learn something. There's a reason the Bible tells us, stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. And that's in Levit Leviticus 19.32. Internet research and websites like Ancestry.com can augment and prompt memories from older relatives. What do you remember about your Aunt Dorothy who grew up in Yonkers? Is a more engaging question than tell me about your relatives. In my youth, third or fourth grade students often tackled the popular family tree. I did that, it was awful. I hated it. Did anybody else hate it? I know like most people are intrigued by like finding out their family tree stuff like their lineage, but it just wasn't my thing. Often tackle the popular family tree assignment with enthusiasm. Entire extended families would get involved in sharing memories of long gone relatives, unusual jobs, memorable neighborhoods, and antidotes, including some that had never been passed on. Those homework assignments are no longer as common. An increase in divorce, single parenthood, Advanced productive technology and alternative lifestyle has left some educators to reevaluate that curriculum. According to the New York Times, the most enriched and problematic of these assignments, 
teachers, school administrators, and, psychologic, and psychologists said. Is the classic family tree, which requires pupils to trace maternal and paternal ancestral lines. Some educators have reacted to the evolving family constellations by scrapping the family tree altogether, while others have modified it. Teachers now assign family timelines, family or orchards, and essays that give children more freedom in telling their personal histories. Such changes in our schools and culture remind us of an even greater need today for families to be intentional about re reviving the art of conversation at dinner tables, on porches, around fireplaces, and strolling down the gravel roads. That's how life, history, dreams, and faith are shared. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Personally, I always, I'll always be glad for my daughter's assignment to interview a relative. Ray Ann captured some audio of my dad sharing stories of World War II he had never mentioned before. It's a cherished recording. On one of my own grandmother's last Thanksgiving meals at my home, I spurred her to share some of her memories. Knowing she was born in 1900, I asked about the first time that she saw an airplane. Her face lit up as she recalled hanging laundry in her backyard with her mom and being awestruck at the sight of a biplane overhead. That's pretty cool. A friendly reminder, conversations like these need to happen sooner rather than later. To finish that nudge, allow me to give you a three-part assignment. First, if you have any grandparents still with us, make a point to follow through even before the next family holiday. Second, if that, if that generation has passed on, ask your own parents about their parents. Encourage them to move beyond super, superficial memories. If it's painful, don't push it but you may well be initiating the best conversation you've had all year. Finally, share a few amusing or engaging things, engaging things you remember about your grandparents or parents with a few members of the youngest generation in your family. Keep it mostly positive, winsome, and filled with hope. Okay, so that's all he's got on the main part. And then he's got checking the list on the bottom. It says, we have a responsibility to preserve our family history and honor the contributions of our ancestors. Often, proud parents will go overboard extolling on the accomplishment of the youngest family member while grandma and grandpa nod and applaud. That's not a bad thing. Grandparents love to brag about their grandkids. But let's make sure the entire family listens with love as living history gets passed down. Celebrating traditions and sharing life-changing moments unties family and keeps them strong. Psalms 145, four says, one generation commends your work to another. They tell of your mighty acts. Have you ever asked your parents or grandparents how and when they have seen God work in their lives? And there's got a little check mark on the bottom. It says, connect with the generations. And actually this kind of reminds me um, of a thought that I had here a while back, which I haven't followed through with yet. But um, as I was doing a Bible study, I was reading and it was talking about how the older generation should share their stories with the younger generation so that they get pet. Like, you tell your children, I can't remember what scripture it was. Anyways, they were saying, you tell your children so that they can tell their children. Um, and that's how stories get passed down. And that's how, that's how religions get passed down. That's how morals get passed down. And it's really an important part of raising your children and your grandchildren and so on, and then them raising theirs. But um, one thing that this made me think about was that here a while back when I was doing that study was I got to thinking that I had never asked my mom or my grandma their testimonies or even my brother and my sister. Like, I know that my brother and my sister were raised in church like I was and they were both saved pretty young. But like, I don't know their personal story like what went on in their head and in their heart that brought them as close to God as what they are today. I don't know what happened with my mom and my grandma. I don't know what in their life was that big moment of change or was it a gradual change. So I would also along with his three challenges I would also challenge you guys to talk to your families if they are Christians um, sharing our testimonies is a big part of 
um, our faith and our walk with God. And I would challenge you guys to ask your family what their testimony is so that we can share that testimony with our children later on in life because that's such a powerful thing to be able to share with somebody. And I'm kind of brokenhearted that I haven't already done that. Like I, I wish I would have done it whenever I thought of it because you never know what's gonna happen and you never know how long you have with each person. And so I need to do that before my time with certain people is up. And so I would challenge you guys to do the same thing. That's it for this one. I hope you guys have a good day. I love you. God loves you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.